What is going on, wrestling fans? It is I see fall on WrestlingNews.co. We are here talking about Elimination Chamber and all the news coming out of that. And of course, with me is the man who runs WrestlingNews.co and everything else underneath it. It's Angel. How you doing, Angel? What's going on? Oh man, hey, how's it been? This is our first time doing this. This is going to be fun. It's our first time here, so I won't ask you any crazy questions. Not yet. But let's talk about Elimination Chamber, though, because, boy, you know, not just the event itself, the things that are coming out of this, which are leading us into WrestleMania season. Stop. Start, let's start off the top. Cody Rhodes challenged The Rock to a one-on-one -on -one match. Now, let me understand something. Do you think this could happen on maybe night one of WrestleMania or somewhere before we even get to WrestleMania? Well, there are no more pay-per-views between now and WrestleMania, so it's not going to happen on a Raw or a SmackDown. I mean, that'd be nuts to just give that way, that match away on free TV. Yes. I think it's going to be night one of WrestleMania. If it, if it doesn't happen at WrestleMania, then they do it maybe like SummerSlam or something like that. But I think night one has to be night one. And Rock has has said that uh, him and Roman, I mean, he, Rock is not wrestling on anything other than like a WrestleMania or maybe or SummerSlam. So I think it's got to be night one. Now, here's the other thing, because if you go back weeks ago, when we saw The Rock join the bloodline, everyone's like, he's doing the L. He's not pointing. He's not doing the finger. He's saying things to Roman Reigns, but really saying them to Cody Rhodes. So now... Is this a bluff, a double bluff, where Cody is going to challenge a rock? Rock says, yeah, I'm not going to fight you, crybaby Cody. You got to take on my cousin at WrestleMania. Leave me alone, jabroni, because that's the only way to tiptoe out of the scenario that everyone on the internet has built up in their brain, that the rock is actually an insider. He's trying to break down the bloodline from inside. So we'll have to see, because really, if the rock doesn't confirm a match with Cody before WrestleMania or at WrestleMania night one, well, then it seems like the rock is is going to be the one who turns on Roman Reigns. But does that ruin Cody Rhodes's championship run if he suddenly is sitting there going like, "Well, I won because people on the outside helped me." You know, I wonder I wonder about the I think a lot I think a, there were a few hints given, right? That I wonder if Rock really is going to turn on Roman Reigns and maybe the turn happens after WrestleMania or some or maybe Roman because like the whole world like okay, if you watched that segment last week, Solo and Paul Heyman were looking at The Rock when he pointed at Roman Reigns when he said, "You're uh, what was it? I'm gonna you're gonna be walking out the loser." Yeah, right. This is before he did the gesture. So if you go back, at, yeah, like I said, Paul Heyman and Solo were looking. Jimmy and Roman were looking the other way. Do you think Paul Heyman did not go back and backstage and tell Roman, "Hey, I think something's up here," or do we go all this time and just make does Roman look like you know? Uh, I don't want to say an idiot, but the whole world kind of has a, an, an inkling, an idea that The Rock might turn on you and everyone knows but you or everyone <laughs> but you and Jimmy. You know what I mean? I, I kind of wonder if Roman attacks Rock beforehand and they do a heated angle or something. And then uh, whatever it is, uh, you know, so then maybe Roman leaves Rock laying and Roman decides, I don't care about this match. You know, maybe it's not a ta it's not a Cody versus uh rock maybe it's a tag match right mm. so maybe uh roman you know they do the tag match and roman leaves rock laying uh and that sets up that sets up the match for either whatever SummerSlam or for next year or whatever whatever right rock is pissed off he and then he costs roman the ra the match the following night and then Co that's how cody Ooh. finishes his story that's a lot that's i a think lot, that, that's a, i think that's a i think it's a lot you've got 42 days between now and then, and Roman's not going to have any suspicions about The Rock, but the rest of the world is suspicious, and Rock's dropping hints on the show. I think it's just a little much, but we'll see. I, I mean, yeah, there's a lot. I, I What I like about what WWE's doing, there's a lot of layers. There's a lot of stuff that there's a lot of directions that you can go. You Everyone could play armchair quarterback, and you, there's a lot of things you can guess about, but we truly don't know, which I love that. I love when uh, stuff is not all leaked out, and we're not finding out finishes, you know, stuff. I like that there's so many ways that this could go. So true. I'm I'm very I'm more interested in this WrestleMania than uh probably any WrestleMania in a long time. Yeah, WrestleMania because 40, 40 years yeah. in the making, too. Um, you know, you brought up the tag team championship match. So let's talk about what I'm seeing online, at least about Limitation Chamber, is the word predictability was everyone called every match there, no one was wrong. But like when you go to a movie and you see a bad guy fighting a good guy. 
or the girl and the guy get together in the end. Hello. You kind of know the ending of a movie when you go to see it. A little bit twist and turns, but the ending's right. there. Same thing with this. Drew McIntyre winning the men's rumble uh, chamber, obvious. Becky Lynch winning, obvious. So you brought up the tag team match possibly with Roman, Rock, Rollins, and Cody. Well, I think that's out the window now because now you have Drew McIntyre and Rollins have confirmed this match is happening at WrestleMania. And oh, I, I think I think Rollins would wrestle twice. By the wow. way, just oh to, God, I hope yeah, not. Because yeah. then I think what would happen is the the, the thing that happened to Rock, which like say a wrestler like um, you know, like uh, Candice LeRae, she's left off the card of WrestleMania because Rollins had to wrestle twice, and Roman had to wrestle twice, right. and Cody had to wrestle twice. Like, what if someone gets hurt in the night one? That's not worth to me ruining your main event of night two of WrestleMania to be like, well, we got to right. everybody. Like, no, don't ruin. The, the the cherry on top but but the predictability isn't it obvious sometimes heading into these things that you know who's gonna win i'm sorry la knight wasn't gonna win you know what i mean like i like la knight but right. he wasn't gonna win it was obvious who was gonna win you you mean obvious at the chamber show tonight yeah oh yeah I, and i think that's fine sometimes too i think it's it's good you know Drew Mac, Drew Mac. Look, I I don't want to. I don't want Triple H to decide. Well, everybody knows Drew's going to win the chamber match, Let's and we're going to swerve everyone and change plan. No, oh. it's fine. Oh, this is it's this. good storytelling. What they're doing and what they're doing with Drew is great. I love it. I, I don't know if he's going to win at WrestleMania. You know, depends on his contract, I guess. But I love what they're doing. And 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 uh, look, they've been. They've been teasing Becky and and Rhea for a few weeks now. Two years, you know? actually, if you look at it, two years. Yeah, right. They've been yeah, they've yeah, yeah. Going around this shit. I'm not. I'm not disappointed. I'm. I'm. I think, you know, Becky's been out of the title picture for a long time. She hasn't had a title. I think in two years, like you said, yeah. and I, I think they're doing a good job. Sometimes it's good. You know, it's okay if you if you know where it's going. I, I tell you that. I tell you what. I was on social media and I was on TikTok. Um, and I, I, there were a lot of people that weren't thinking it was going to be Becky Lynch. I saw people saying Bianca Belair. There were a few, a few Liv Morgan fans. So I think it's obvious to some of us, but a lot of people weren't, and they weren't thinking the same way. So it's um, that's interesting to me. But yeah, I think it's, uh, I think there, there's no need to swerve just for the sake of like, well, the internet fans know because. I'm, I don't miss There's those no days. I don't miss those days. No, at all. no. Like, that's found the, out who's going to win Money in the Bank? Well, let's... WCW, WCW, used to, WCW used to do that stuff all the time. Well, well, well so-and-so is it was supposed to win tonight, but guess what? It got leaked out by, by some newsletter or whatever, so we're going to change the match. Like, why? And now you're going to change the next however many months of plans because 10% oh, of the audience knows who's going to win? It makes no sense. No, it, it does so, make no sense. And obviously, like, for instance, like Kabuki Warriors fighting Indy and Kenneth LeRae. Great moment for Indy, but at the same time, we're in a damage control-centric storyline involving Bailey and yes. Dakota, and there's no way that Asuka and Akari were going to lose you know, that right. matchup. Rhea Ripley, she's in Australia. She's from Australia, taking on Nia yes. Jax in the main event. Well, like, these are obvious choices. It's not rocket science when you kind of break it down. Yeah, and I, and I think... Changing the finish in Australia for Rhea Ripley, that would, you know, what, you know, what was, no, she's not. I, I never once thought Rhea Ripley was going to lose the belt before WrestleMania. Yes. And she shouldn't, you know, you stay, you stay the course. I like what, I like what Triple H is doing. And there's a lot of, uh, they're also doing a good job at, at, at elevating people where like Nia, Nia Jax lost, but I'm sure on Monday, she's just going to destroy someone. Yeah. Okay. You know they're gonna they're like they're they're doing they they've done a good job with characters. There's a lot of character like this is the best Nia Jax we've seen. This is the best Drew we've seen. This is the like you can say that for a lot of people. Like even 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 DIY who wasn't on the show. Like they're like a lot of people are getting elevated in a way that which and where they haven't before on the main roster. So um, yeah, I'm I guess I'm kind of rambling on here, but it's good storytelling. There was no need to change anything. Yeah. Predictability, I think, is okay in professional wrestling. The one thing that's very yeah, yeah. interesting about yeah. this paper, ever, ever, ever watch, sorry, ever watch a Hallmark movie? <laughs> ever watch a, <laughs> Disney, yeah, ever watch a, a Christmas movie on Hallmark? I yeah. think 
they get together in the end and everything Always. is okay. And this that's last Always. for 25 days of Christmas. So there's no, yes. oh my God, can you believe this girl and guy <laughs> fell in love with each other? Yes, I can believe it because oh sometimes gosh. the ending is obvious, but getting the journey to get there is the best part. But this pay-per-view is going to be historic for a few reasons. And one, maybe people don't even realize there were more women matches on this pay-per-view than men matches. You go back in yes. history, I don't, in the top of my head, it's got to be at least like eight years or something like that, that this has actually happened. And this has been a complaint for a long time. Go back to SummerSlam when um, Rhea Ripley, I think, and Becky Lynch, the the idea of them, was it just Becky Lynch? Yeah, it was Becky Lynch. And wasn't even on the card against Trish Stratus. So people were right. like up in arms about this. And as we have seen right. through different PLEs, some matches are safe for Raw's. Some are safe for SmackDowns, can make those shows exciting, which they have been. The ratings prove it. And then the PLEs. We don't give you Gunther every time defending the championship. We don't give you Rollins defending the championship every time, which is great. But having more women matches, this is this is like, I can't believe that I, we have to talk about it, that this is like the first time in a very long time this has happened. Yeah, this is the side effect of what I mentioned earlier, that they're elevating so many more stars that you can't cram everyone into one show. So you have like Gunther, maybe he'll, Gunther will skip this one, but we'll see him at WrestleMania. Yeah. And then maybe he'll, maybe, you know, um, you'll have uh, DIY, you know, DIY. I keep mentioning DIY because I like DIY, but you'll, ha you'll have <laughs> DIY skip a show, but they'll be on the next one. But it's okay because you don't get burned out on seeing these people. And also you're giving people time off and all that and this and that. So I, I love it. And, and it's, um, I'm a big fan of that. Me too. I'm a big fan of that. And so yeah. coming out of this chamber uh, event, obviously we have created the pathway to WrestleMania and some matches are being booked inside these chamber matches, which I absolutely love. I love when the Royal Rumble does this. I love when chamber does this as well. It seems like some of these matches like LA Knight and AJ Styles, we are on the pathway. We got two days of WrestleMania as well. That's like four hours each night. So you got to fill it in. AJ versus LA Knight. That's going to be beautiful. Randy Orton versus Logan Paul, it feels like we're leading down the pathway to a yes. U.S. championship for Randy Orton. I don't think Randy Orton's ever held the champ, the U.S. championship. Would that be the, I don't, I don't the think so. like the actually, like he's done everything else, but that. Yeah, he's the, he, he's won tag team world championship. You, uh, intercontinental title. Yeah. Uh, Royal Rumble. He's main event at WrestleMania. Royal. Money in the bank. Yeah. I don't think he's ever won a U.S. title, so I think it's time, especially at WrestleMania. I guess you know what I you know, I I've been a supporter of of uh, I'm a big fan of Randy Orton for forever since he started. When he first started, I always thought he was going to be a big deal. I always wonder why he's not pushed as a main event. I I understand the Logan Paul match is a big deal because you know Logan Logan gets more attention than most because of who he is and he's a social media star. But and maybe next year, maybe look, I, I get it. You're doing Rock and Cody, but I, I I wonder why Randy is not looked at as one of those guys. Like I don't hear talk about like Mount Rushmore, um, mm. the greatest of all time. I don't hear that talk with him. I, he did an interview uh, not too long ago, and someone called him the goat, and you know he was very humble about it. Well, I don't know about that. There's a lot of other people who you might call the goat. I think Randy is the goat. Uh, I'd love to see him in more in the mix. Maybe after WrestleMania, challenge him, uh, whoever, whether it's uh, Cody or Roman Reigns. I'm guess, going to guess Cody. I'd love to see Cody and, and Randy Orton after WrestleMania. I, I want to see Randy back in the mix. But I think that at WrestleMania is going to win that U.S. title because Logan's not around often. Right. He's only wrestling every couple of months. So putting Bell on Randy would be nice, too. No. I got a little worried then that they're in a chamber match. I, I I guess he just does a good job selling because he was holding his back. I'm like, oh, my God, I hope he's not hurt yeah, again. Already, like CM Punk at Royal Rumble, which was so sad. Uh, no, yeah. You bring up Randy Orton. And is it the case of he was a star during the John Cena era? So, like, for instance, when you think of Mount Rushmore's, I love Macho Man, but he is in the Hogan era. So he doesn't yes. get on the Mount Rushmore first. It's always Hogan. You know, Austin, Rock, and then Flair, and then you throw or, or whatever you throw in your your jumbles right, right. of people. But like when you, I guess if you're part of a certain era, you like Batista. I love Batista, but he's also from the John Cena era. So if you're from that era, right. you're you're number two, maybe number three, but you are not even close to number one. Like two and one are way up. Very there. true. 
So maybe, maybe that's the case with yeah. Randy Orton. But, you know, I, I love him so much. And we'll see because a few years ago, I feel like him and Rey Mysterio, before Rey Mysterio left and came back, they were just like floundering on Raw, kind of just randomly there, not there. But we'll, we'll, I, hopefully everything works out now. I feel like he's just happy to be there versus before. Because in that interview with Sports Illustrated, he said, you know, before I would have been really angry about CM Punk also returning in the same night I was returning. He's like, the clearly, old Randy, yeah. clearly he has grown up and realized that I'm getting paid no matter what I do. Uh, the fans are going to cheer money, me yeah. no matter what I do. I have a beautiful wife, a beautiful family. Everyone's healthy and happy. So what is there to complain about? He's done it all except you win the U.S. championship, which he's probably going to do at WrestleMania yeah. 40. But, you know, and then also newcomers to the main roster, Tiffany Stratton, which I had the honor of interviewing. It is on WrestlingNews.co's YouTube channel right now. And... Her and Naomi, it feels like these two are going to lead down a pathway to fight each other. Bianca Belair needs a, an opponent. Jade needs an opponent. Like There's a lot of openings for, I hope, just like here tonight at Chamber, where we had more women matches than men. I'm really hoping we don't just get, hey, uh, it's an, it's four women tag teams in a match. And then there's two singles matches for championship, Bailey and Io yeah. and Rhea. And I want Tiffy. I want Tiffy time versus Naomi. I want Jade versus Bianca Belair in a one-on-one -on -one match. I want to spread the love, not like last year was the tag team showcases where they just threw well, in a bunch of people. That's why we have two nights. Yeah, and that's what that's that's the good thing about two nights. That there's more room, and the, I think the show's starting a little earlier this year, so there's oh, more. I, I, yeah, it's starting at uh, I believe about an about an hour earlier this year. So both Super. both nights. So I think, yeah, I think there's room. There's Look, tri Triple H did a good job with the women's division in NXT, and he's doing a good job now. So I think we're, we'll see more women's matches. Well, I mean, I'm sure we'll see a couple, you know, multi-person matches. Not just women, but the men too. But we'll see maybe a multi-woman match here and there. But I I'm guessing we'll get at least two per night, hopefully more. Yeah, but, I, I really hope so. Because you can't yeah. just throw Bianca. Like last year was a waste of Becky being in a three on three match. You can't waste Bianca Belair in a three on three match or a tag team match. I'm sorry. I'm like, right. no, no, nothing against tag team matches, but shh, you wouldn't do that to, I guess, Roman Reigns. You know, like you wouldn't do it to certain people. So are you thinking Jade versus Bianca? I want it. I want that. Who I, wins? I, Jade wins and Bianca turns heel later on. Sounds good to me. We need a fresh start. Bianca has landed. And then they can just they can rematch them at SummerSlam. Yeah, we could. I, hey, I'm all for that because the Bailey EO Sky is going to last a little bit longer after WrestleMania, where multiple members of Damage Control will be involved in a storyline heading into France and uh, Backlash. So that there's a lot of things that can obviously happen out of WrestleMania. But I think Elimination Chamber was a fun event. And just like when I traveled to say Puerto Rico for Backlash, or I went to London for Money in the Bank. When you have home talent in their area, the crowd is different because obviously Australia, when is the last time they got a PLE? I don't know. Was it like 2000 years ago? Maybe? Seven years ago. Seven years no, ago. No, no, 20, 20. No, no, sorry. PL, a PLE in Australia about 20 years ago, I believe. It was it called Insurrection? No, 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 no. Uh, geez, super, no, was Super Showdown in Australia? Oh, 2018 then. Seven years ago. Yeah. Six, yeah. seven years ago. Yeah. yeah. So that's a long time. And then. And before that, it was like 2022, uh, no, 2002, I think maybe Insurrection yeah. or something. Yeah, so, they'll go there a lot. So think about that, where you have an audience of 60,000, 70,000 people going crazy. Didn't matter what happened out there. They would have given you everything they got. And I think that really makes these PLEs exciting more than just going to nothing against it. But I was at Payback and I was at Fastlane, Pittsburgh. You know, and, you know, <laughs> nothing wrong with Pittsburgh. nothing wrong with Pittsburgh. nothing wrong with Pittsburgh. Nothing wrong with the homeless yeah. population that I saw at night. But no, seriously, every big every big city has homeless problems. But Pittsburgh <laughs> or like Indiana, and I'm traveling these places, and I'm like, you know, I really really kind of miss Puerto Rico right now, and miss London and Los Angeles, and you know. But still, I think it's awesome to see uh, the audience really get into these events, and that, and, that, and to me, that's fun. It's just a lot of fun. Obviously, Ray Ripley will, will be asked about this event for the rest of her life, being like, "How did it feel? Was it your WrestleMania?" And he's probably always say yes. Yeah, absolutely. It, it, it kind of felt like a, a WrestleMania in a way with the, with the you know the large crowd, fifty thousand fans there, and, and the stage setup and all that. I by the way, I love that they're doing more stadium shows. I, I love the stadium shows. I hope they go with the minimal, um, like the Royal Rumble set for, for future stadium shows because I love that set, the minimal set. But I, yeah, I love the WWE is 
I, I, I don't believe I don't think they've been this hot since the attitude era. They don't they they they, they didn't run. It used to be stadium shows were like once a year were WrestleMania were stadium shows. That was it. And then you know Saudi Arabia because they got paid to be there. But other than that, you would not see. Now you're getting Australia. You got uh, Tampa. Then you got uh, Paris. Uh, not Paris. Uh, France coming up. Obviously WrestleMania coming up. They're doing like four or five stadium shows a year. Like WWE is hotter than it's been in a long, long time. Does it feel like? Does it feel that way? So it's interesting you say that because I keep hearing that same exact sentence, that conversation, even at the Royal Rumble press conference, someone asked Triple H, is this the new era of the WWE? Like, are we in a new era now? Because I feel like, and honestly, I feel like you don't realize how good it is while you're living in the, the life that you're living in right now. So in five years, we'll say, man, remember, yeah. remember those stadium shows? Man, remember that? And I just hope it continues on because I think they've made the right business decisions to continue on with Netflix and the CW and USA and PLEs going to the stadium. So I think it is business-wise and stadium-wise, but like, for instance, I always give the example of, I remember being a kid going to, say, a gas station, and I would see a DX suck it shirt or an NWO shirt because that was the thing to buy, like Beanie Babies or... Uh, Tamagotchis, uh, yo-yos, there's always something. Right now, that something is not wrestling. I can't talk to a normal, right. regular person and say Seth Rollins, and they go, oh yeah, 1989, if I mentioned Stone Cold Steve Austin, they knew who that person was. So we're in an era of business-wise, of course, but pop culture-wise, no. Yeah, I, I think I think there's room for more growth. I think, I think what they're doing is there's going to be – the, by the way, there was an interview The Rock did a few weeks ago, and he kind of hinted about, they asked him about Netflix, and he says 52 weeks a year on Netflix is a lot of time, is a, is a, a lot, that's a lot of days to be raising the eyebrow. He didn't say he was going to be on every week, but it sure sounded like he was going to be on more often. And he's getting paid $30 million a year to be on the board, and he's going to want to bring a return on that, on that money that he's getting paid. I think we're going to see more of Rock. I think we're going to see this corporate rock uh, versus, uh, you know, maybe Triple H and, and his group of wrestlers storyline. And I think with that, we're going to see more interest in the product. I think that's what we're going to see. I, I could be wrong, but it, it feels like they're leaning into this corporate rock stuff where, you know, it's like the new age McMahon versus uh, Austin storyline. Yeah. And I think we'll start seeing that after WrestleMania. I don't think rock's going away. By the way, now I'm going on a little tangent here. The re and so I don't think Rock's scoring away after WrestleMania. So that that opens the door wide for a lot of things. It doesn't have to just be Rock gets laid out. It could be anything. Rock maybe lays out Roman Reigns, and you know they continue on. You know, and then uh, maybe Rock takes a couple months off, and then they do WrestleMania next year. But uh, yeah, um, I think we're going to see a lot of uh, the company is going to grow a lot more this year than I th that I think people are, don't realize how much what what else is to come because they're they're going to be working together with UFC. Um, they're going to be doing events, uh, weekend events. You're going to see more like Michael Chandler showing up on Raw. You're going to see probably wrestlers showing up on UFC, cutting promos on other wrestlers. So you're going to see a lot more of that. And they're going to push. I think TKO is going going to want to push more hard, harder to get more. Uh, you know, you're going to see Roman Reigns probably maybe doing move. You know, maybe doing more uh, TV shows and movies. Or not more, but gonna start doing yeah, some yeah, of yeah. that stuff, and you're gonna see. Yeah, I think that's what where we're headed. Where they wanna instead of well, you you know, there were stories back in the day of wrestlers getting you know, stone cold. Um, there were movie roles that were offered to him, and he didn't find out about it until after the company turned it down. You're not gonna see that anymore. You're gonna see WWE embrace that more often. You're gonna see Bianca Belair and other wrestlers do more reality shows and more TV shows. So I think we're gonna see more. Are we going to get to the Attitude Era where you're going to see shirts everywhere? Probably not. I remember 1998, uh, walking the streets of New York with my, you know, with some friends, and I just clear as day, bootleg shirts everywhere. Austin oh, yeah. 316, yeah. DX shirts. Uh, I remember some Road Dog shirts. I don't think we're going to get to that, but There's I think we're getting to ones. a point where, yeah, yeah, I, I, I might still have that Road Dog one somewhere in a box somewhere. But I think we're gonna get we're gonna get where the company's gonna go even more. Ratings are gonna go up higher. And with Netflix next year, who doesn't have Netflix? Everyone, it's right? The number one streaming. Everyone's got Netflix. So when you turn on Netflix on the day of a, on the day of a PLE, 
and course, backlash yeah. is on that day. That the first thing you're gonna see on the screen. Oh, what's the WWE stuff? The backlash pay per view. I get to watch this for free. I haven't watched WWE in a few years. Let me check this out. I think that's where you're gonna see the growth of the company. So that makes sense. That's my two yeah. cents. No, no, I agree. I yeah. think um, wrestling finally has become like the SNL that it always wanted to be. Where yes, because for so long they like beg celebrities to come on Raw. They're Raw GMs. Come on, come on, on. We'll, we'll promote your book for three hours. We'll promote your movie for three hours. And it was awful. Like people talk about anytime you tell me wrestling was bad. It went. I don't care what year you're pointing at. The guest GM era is the era that needs to be burned. Oh put in a hole set on fire and never seen yes. ever again and nothing against the athletes but all about that awful promotion so i think like bad bunny the logan paul involved except bob barker. the rock yeah bob barker we love him when he chopped uh, chris jericho <laughs> we will take that and chavo guerrero yeah. being attacked as well now, i i also yeah. like, i also like the muppet episode all right fine i liked a few yes. episodes i liked a few of them there's a few there there were a few but the rest of them were ugh, god they were awful but i honestly god i think the celebrity thing the, the bad bunny was an experiment during the pandemic and it worked out and then from there other people were like oh, wait a minute this guy's number one spotify star he's not just a guy who's here to promote a movie and then Logan Paul, one of the biggest social media acts in the world. You can say whatever you want about Logan Paul, but the money's there. The the prime energy drinks. And this isn't sponsored, but this is delicious. Um, so I think that's what happened. I think enough home runs happened. Huge moves happened. And they all were successful. So now we're on a golden goose era where we can crap any idea of our ass. And it's going to be a golden goose idea because somehow the momentum is going up. No matter what happens, it's going to go up. So I think what you just said is the rock involvement as well. Tell me someone, I talked to my dad about this and I was like, dad, the rock, you know, the rock. He's like, yeah, everyone knows the rock. I go, do you know who Cody Rhodes is? He's like, I have no idea who that is. And I was like, well, there you go. The outside eyeball knows who the rock is. And they might right. be interested. Oh, I saw him in Doom. Oh, he was in Black Adam. He's in the Fast and Furious movie. So we'll have to see how that goes down. But I think you're right. I think we're in a, we are in a new era, but I don't, I can't like go, we're here. We, we've done it. Like, I don't right. know. I don't know. Well, I think the bloodline really started the momentum yeah. and here we are now. And everyone has lifted themselves up. As in Austin, Rick Mann was the beginning. Then everyone else lifted themselves up based off of that platform they were put on. So I think we are in a new era, but. I can't pinpoint exactly where yeah. it started and hopefully where it's going to end. Yeah. I, I think, I, I think we're, I think we're in the beginning of, I, Paul Heyman said we're in the third inning I remember that. of the bloodline storyline. Yeah. I think we're in the, you know, the first couple innings of whatever era this is. Mm -hmm. And I think next year when the Netflix uh, deal kicks in, we're going to see a lot. There, there are things that we can't even imagine that are going to happen next year. It's going to be crazy. You know? man. Hey, Maybe Taylor Swift decide, you know, maybe Taylor Swift decides to do something with WWE, right? I'll tell you what. You never know. I'll tell you you what. never, never know. Uh, you know, I, I don't think I've ever spoken about this on camera, but I'll tell you what. When I said that Taylor Swift thing and the world went upside down, guess who recently, about a couple months ago, invited Taylor Swift to WrestleMania? Seth Rollins. Okay. Becky Lynch did the same thing. No one's stupid. It's, it's called the long game and i was in it baby and here we are taylor swift sing the national anthem at wrestlemania let's do it let's do it and then you you had uh travis was it donna kels travis kels's mom travis hanging, out kels's mom. Michaels. Um, hanging out with Shawn michaels there we go T baby steps right that's right my you never, friend. never never never, you, you never and maybe it doesn't happen this year maybe it happens next year right yeah turn down the super bowl maybe so, she won't turn down wrestlemania right We'll have to see how we'll that see. goes down. But either way, uh, thumbs up, thumbs down, thumbs in the middle for Elimination Chamber. What do you think? It was it was a th thumbs up. I, I I enjoyed the show. I thought it was yeah. good. Yeah, me too. I thought it was fun. Again, quick and easy. The past two PLEs um, have only had like four or five matches on them because of the the match structures. Royal Rumbles, obviously, and Elimination Chamber is along too. So I thought it was great, but now we are on the road to WrestleMania. I don't care about anything that happened now today. We are moving forward, and Cody finishing the story. We'll see how that goes down. But obviously, me and you will probably sit down a lot more before then to talk about what the hell is happening leading into WrestleMania. And by the way, we're about to hit 100K on YouTube, and I believe we're going to give a championship away when that happens. Am I correct? Yeah, when we hit 100,000 subs, uh, we're going to give an official replica. This isn't a bootleg knockoff or anything like that. An official replica WWE Universal Championship. It's the belt that Roman Reigns holds. That's an official replica of that belt. So when we hit when we hit 100,000 subs, I'll be giving that away. 
Now, again, if you don't win, that's fine because I'll be doing away. I'll be giving away more stuff, whether it's tickets or maybe a gift card or maybe more belts. So let me know. Let us know in the comments what other giveaways you want to see and uh, any suggestions for the future. Perfect. Well, we have done it, folks. Limited Chamber is over. Royal Rumble done. WrestleMania on the horizon. I cannot wait. I'm Steve Fall. He's Angel, the man behind the magic here at WrestlingNews.co. See you later and have a great day.